Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking ozone in your reef tank. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now lately I've been getting asked a lot if I'm still using ozone. About a year or two ago I did a video on using ozone in your reef tank. And yes, yes I still am using it. Now I get asked quite a bit about it and there's a few main benefits to using ozone. Um, now one of it is obvious one which is crystal clear water. So it's hard to pick it up on camera but being able to see you know six feet super crisp and clear down the end of the tank really is pretty awesome. Um, a couple other benefits are it can actually make your skimmer work better. Um, it breaks down all those yellowing kind of organic pigments and organics out of your water, which is another big one. Um, I also find the skimmer smells less, which is another plus. So it kind of works like carbon, right? If you add carbon to your tank, it's going to help remove all those organics, those yellowing pigments out of the water, make your water crystal clear and help absorb some of the smells. Now ozone gives you similar benefits but more by oxidizing those particles and breaking them down and it's removed out by your skimmer. So there is a lot of kind of similarities to do it. Um, carbon's obviously the quick, easy, safe way. Ozone's the electronic way to do it. Now, if you use too much ozone in your tank, that can actually be bad. Um, so too, too much ozone can be bad for fish and corals. It can be bad for health, but a little bit of ozone can actually go a long way and have a ton of benefits. Now you generally need to use an ozone reactor. In my case, I'm actually just using my skimmer. So this little hose here is going into the bottom of the skimmer intake. Now, if you are using your skimmer, you do need to make sure your skimmer is made to handle ozone. Uh, this is a NIOS that actually has an ozone port in it. So you know it's made for it and you can know it can handle it long-term. If your skimmer isn't rated for ozone, then you risk it kind of breaking down long-term um, and it could kind of crack or wear down the acrylic long-term. So make sure you are using one for it. They also do make ozone reactors, which is basically like a tube that's kind of a similar thing, just works as a reaction chamber. Um, but I don't actually see those in use very often, so the majority of people will just use their skimmer. So there's definitely a lot of benefits you can get from using ozone, but the main one that I shoot for is just that crystal clear water. Now I just still do use carbon once in a while, but I do that more if there's any bit of an oceany, fishy smell in the tank, then I'll use it. Um, it's not very often, maybe every six weeks or so. Uh, now big, two big words of advice. One, less is more, you don't want to overdo it. Ideally, you want to have an aquarium controller with an ORP probe in it. Um, generally, the value of ORP doesn't really matter. Higher, in theory, is a bit of a cleaner water, but um, 450 is kind of the upper edge. So the main thing to know is make sure your ORP does not go over 450. Now, also, ozone in the air isn't really good for you to breathe it. So I only run it from like four, like I think it's two or three in the morning to like five, six in the morning. So it runs at night when I'm in bed anyways. And I also only run a very low amount. So you want to run just enough to get the job done. Now, there's two different types of ozone. Uh, you can create it via UV or Corona Discharge Place. I've always went for Corona Discharge Plate, which is a little electronic one. Uh, main reason is it requires a lot less electricity. It's a couple watts versus, you know, a 40, 50 watt UV bulb. You don't have to replace the bulbs all the time. So less energy, don't have to worry about replacing bulbs, win-win. So definitely a lot of benefits there. Now, if you just want crystal clear water, I mean, carbon can do it. You can replace your carbon once in a while. You can do it with UV or ultraviolet light that will also give that crystal clear water. So I do have some kind of similarities and different things. I'm um, actually might be adding UV to the tank. So I don't know if there's going to be any benefit at all to using UV with ozone. So we'll maybe I'll stop using it. We'll see how that goes. So it'll be an interesting experiment. Um, another big question I get asked a lot is, do you need an air dryer? So with um, an ozone generator, uh, moist air it makes it not as efficient. Now you can buy air dryers, but they're kind of expensive, especially the electronic ones. You get the silica beads and you can do those. It pulls the moisture out of it. And then you'll have dry air going into your ozone generator. However, every like week or two, you're going to pull those beads out, put them in the oven, dry them out and kind of recharge those silica beads. So I did that for a while, but got old after a while. Now there's electronic ones, but they're like hundreds of dollars. And I find that one a bit harder to justify. My outlook on this is kind of, I'm only running a small amount anyways, and if I'm only running my UV at say 50, or my ozone generator at 50%, do I really care if it's not as efficient? Not really. I mean, you could always just turn up a little bit more to compensate and save yourself a four shot on air dryer. That's kind of my two cents on it. So if you are going to use ozone, there's definitely a ton of benefits, but only use just enough to get the job done. I have a 50 milligram unit, and I think I'm only running about half, so it's roughly 25 milligrams. So it's a very low amount on a 200 gallon tank and I'm running that for 
probably, I think about four hours, maybe five max per night. Again, when I'm in bed. Um, another wise thing to do is you can put carbon, if you're using your skimmer's reactor, you can put carbon on the vents on the top of the skimmer or carbon on the output of the skimmer and that's gonna absorb any residual ozone. Uh, ozone does have a pretty quick half-life, so it does break down fairly, relatively quickly. So if you're not around or whatever, it's probably not a big deal. But if you are around right by your tank, putting that carbon on there, just absorb any excess bit is always a wise idea. So there are definitely a lot of benefits to running ozone as long as you do it safely. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, hit that like button if you're new, make sure you subscribe. And if there's anything I didn't answer that you still wanna know, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to answer for you guys. All right guys, hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys on the next video.